A warm welcome to everybody out there. Uh, today at uh, 28th of uh, September 2017, my name Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for those types of webinars and at that specific date uh, within the week. Yeah, um, it's a pleasure for me to have you here and uh, to the next uh, webinar with the title The Five Biggest Mistakes in Discretionary Trading. Okay, uh, that's really a little bit different kind of webinar we do today, but you will see it's a mixture. Um, it's not a trading strategy I will introduce once again here. Um, it's more learning from other people mistakes. And um, other means, for example, me and um, my own observations. But still, even talking today about discretionary trading, it means that we uh, will have uh, some aspects of statistics as well. Um, more or less every mistake I will underline and um, uh, let's say proof uh, by some specific Excel sheet. And as always, if you have interest in those Excel sheets, just send me an email to s.friedrichowski at jftbrokers.com um, and uh, I will make sure that you get all the sheets. In the slides of today you can already download via the GoToWebinar control panel as always. And um, yeah, that's it. Ah, that was uh, I want to mention. Uh, sometimes I got questions uh, simply how can I view those videos later once again? Um, so yes, there are always recordings and you can find them on the JFD YouTube channel and uh, to to reach that one is uh, quite easy uh, go to google and um, press uh, jfd youtube channel and you will automatically uh, be directed to that youtube channel uh, there you find my webinars but also those of my colleagues and even now um, there are already um, some webinars in French, if you like. So that's a good trader as well there. Uh, and uh, he is doing French webinars. But anyhow, um, let's go into the topic of today. Uh, as always, I have to show this slide once because we talk about trading strategies. Uh, therefore, uh, here's a risk disclaimer, meaning whatever you will learn here, finally, if you trade, you simply trade on your own and uh, yeah i think that's self-explaining and uh, you know what you are doing nevertheless i hope you can enjoy a few aspects of mine here as well and to get um, some other insights let's see so um it's not uh, the normal introduction i use here because i not do not list just the five mistakes and that's it um, because that would be too simple and just to name them um, without knowing why is not the right way and i will show you why but uh, nevertheless let me explain you um, how I come to those five mistakes, and by the way, uh, it will be six. Uh, I have six topics, but anyhow. Um, so it's my personal experience of trading for more than a decade uh, right now. And um, I want to mention that a lot of experience I got from other people trading simply by offering coaching for them. And uh, therefore, I learned a little bit more about uh, those other people. Of course, I will never name somebody um, personally, but uh, the one or the other might even know what I'm talking about here and uh, who um, has been in that coaching. But anyhow, um, we will have some general thoughts about or concerning trading as well, because that is already sufficient to come to some conclusions. So, but let's go on. So the first one I want to mention here is what I call over trading. Uh, what do I mean? Um, I know especially from my own experience and from uh, other people doing that coaching, that many traders tend to have a too high trading frequency. So they are simply trading too many trades a day. So especially um, if you have the time, um, 
the complete day or whatever time frame you might use. So in total, you might do five trades, 10 trades, 20 trades. Basically, the number is not, um, I would say, that important. You might trade uh, one trade per week or you might trade 20 trades per day. That does not automatically mean that you are good or bad or profitable or not profitable. But what we have to keep in mind is the relationship between the trading volume we trade and our account size. And I will show it to you with some numbers. And I hope that this is already the first eye opener for you because simply by trading itself, we, we introduce, we generate costs. You know my sentence, if I open a trade, I'm instantly in minus. Why? I have to pay the spread and I have to pay commission. And even uh, if you would trade at a market maker where you don't have commissions, uh, but then you will see you will have higher spreads. So anyhow, there are costs of trading and instantly opening a trade means you are in the minus. If we have a high trading volume, that automatically generates quite a lot of costs. And now change your perspective. Think more like a businessman um, owing a, a small company. And of course, the first thing you have in mind is if you have costs, you have to cover your costs. So that is the first what you want to achieve. But let's go into an Excel sheet uh, because then it becomes maybe a little bit more obvious what I'm I'm talking about. And um, that Excel sheet does not uh, really do a lot of things, but um, they will illustrate um, the costs of trading. Let's assume we have an account of 500 euro. So really a small account, but anyhow, it's enough to, to have uh, trading activities. That's just an example, but you can scale it up and down as you like, uh, so no problem. And now I uh, took two numbers, one for spreads, I assume 0.4 bips, which is already at the lower end. Uh, Euro, US dollar, you definitely can trade for a point Four, but um, other pairs like, like uh, for example, British pound against New Zealand dollar or something like that, or maybe British pound against Australian dollar, you might have even spreads uh, with one BIP and uh, even higher. So, but 0.4 BIPs typically can be translated to four euro if you trade one lot. So those two numbers here are simply per lot. So now let's add the commission. So we have a JFD 5.5 euro per lot and that adds up to nearly 10 euro if we trade one lot. Okay, so there are the costs per lot. And now let's assume that you have um, a trading activity, daily traded uh, volume of point 0.05 lots, which is not uh, much. It might be five trades with 0 0.01 or maybe one trade with 0 0.05, anyhow. So let's assume that is your daily volume being traded. That would generate daily costs of nearly half a euro. And if I multiply that one with 250, which is um, about uh, the, the number of days you can trade if I neglect the Sunday uh, late evening hours, um, then this adds up to 120 euros. And now let's compare those 120 euros with our account size of 500 euro. So it's about 24%. That means we need a profitability in terms of um, rate of interest or return on invest. Uh, and we will talk about that number later uh, as well. But let's take that number. So we need a profitability of 24% just to cover our costs. 
which is quite a lot. So, and even if you think about that, um, that uh, this is not that much, you, of course, you can earn those costs by your trading activities. But let's go a little bit further. Let's assume, and that's my experience with other people, that they, even in that small account, they trade per day 0.2 lots. Okay. Now we have already a need for 100% profitability just to cover our costs. That's still not earning any euro. It's only covering costs. So what is the message here? Look to your account and look to your costs of trading. And may uh, and might be that you think about, hey, do I trade too much? Do I have too many trades per day? Or is even my lot size uh, simply too high for my account? We talk about stop loss later but, and uh, risk reward ratios of trading. Um, that, that this has to be taken into account here as well. And it's not my message to say generally, hey, you can't trade 0.2 lots if it was a 500 euro account. Of course you can. But still think there's only a limited profit you can take out of the market. And if you would need 0.2 lots per day with that kind of account, it will be hard to cover your costs. So that's the message here. Um, that's... Uh, Overtrading, uh, or I call it simply overtrading, uh, meaning you trade too much. And maybe it's better to check it and uh, have a look to your account. It's quite easy. Just uh, go to your MT4 uh, statement um, and add up your commissions, and um, you know how many trades uh, you have entered. Uh, then you can build a number for the paid spread as well. And then you know your costs of trading. And it might be good to have a closer look to that. Okay, so that's one thing, and uh, that's a typical mistake many people are doing, especially those um, who are beginners. Uh, they think, okay, with the next trade, everything can be covered, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And that's definitely not the right way. So avoid over trading. But let's jump into the next topic. And uh, that is the one I simply named risk management. And what I mean here is not what most of the people are talking about and you find uh, in books, textbooks about trading. Um, there is always a long debate about a 0.5% uh, per trade, 1%, 2%, 5%, whatever number. No, that's not exactly what I have in mind here. It's more to follow exactly that number of risk per trade. So it's extremely important that you have a given number as a risk per trade for your next trade. If that is 0.5% of your account, okay. If it's 2% of your account, okay. That's not my message. My message is calculate that number. Maybe you have different numbers for different kind of trading activities. For intraday trading, you go for 0.5 or even 0.25. Or, and you have daily activities, you might risk 2% of your account. Write those numbers down and then follow exactly that number. But before really going into that detail, of course, I have to mention trading without a stop loss because that is the next one we have to uh, to have in mind. Uh, that is a stop loss and that comes with a risk for your next trade as well. So if you don't want to have unlimited risk, then it's a no-go. Saying unlimited risk is not true for every kind of trade. Um, and therefore, I, I uh, have already in brackets here exception, point, 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 um, simple reason. So if you may buy one lot DAX long trade today, then the DAX is right now about at uh, 12,000 points, then your risk is limited. 
if you buy one lot, your risk is limited to 12,000 euros. So if you are willing to, um, to accept in principle a loss, it's not highly prof um, probably uh, that you that the DAX will be tomorrow at zero. And uh, honestly, if the DAX would be tomorrow at zero, I think we have other problems than um, thinking about our trading activities. But anyhow, the risk is limited for a long trade on DAX. Uh, for a short trade, not. But that's more mathematically speaking. So. If you are willing to accept the loss of 12,000 euros, you can, of course, buy one lot of ducks without a stop loss. Um, and there might be other exceptions that you don't set a stop loss. Maybe you have an expert advisor uh, constantly looking to your trades. And uh, if there's so you have a virtual stop loss, because then the expert advisor might intercept there, yeah, uh, interact with um, uh, the, the broker. So that might be other reasons that you don't have an explicit stop loss, but um, you have at least a stop loss in mind. So what I do, and that's uh, already my solution approach here, is simply that a trade needs a given risk in euro and a stop loss value. And out of those two first numbers, the given risk and the stop loss value, like a long trade DAX 12,000 points, entry level stop loss at 11,000 points, whatever. Then we can calculate the resulting lot size for our trade, having in mind that if we do it in exactly that sequence, we have a given risk in euro. Still, there might be gaps, um, there's a risk of gaps. Um, so let's put them. Uh, aside for a moment, but um, finally, we have a given risk per trade. I don't do it normally vice versa, because we could do it vice versa as well. If we have a given risk, we can set a lot size for our trade, and then it would result in a stop loss value for our underlying. But that's not my favorite. Um, my favorite is other way around. And let's be a little bit more practical here. Um, and um, let's uh, get a chart uh, in order to really see what I do here. And uh, then I will, can introduce a small Excel sheet, which helps me if I do trades um, like um, discretionary trades here out of the chart. Let's assume in this case, we have the US dollar Japanese yen. Um, and uh, let me have a quick check of where we are. A daily chart here. Okay, there's really no good trend. And um, uh, we might be at an upper, upper limit here. So south direction may be in favor. And let me quickly jump through some different timelines and uh, go back to my M14 chart. And now I say, okay, I come to the conclusion. Um, I go... Um, uh, with a short trade here. By the way, that would be another mistake. What I what I have uh, have I done here? I used two minutes or maybe even less in order to come to an opinion. Now I would want to enter a trade, and I have in mind to maybe profit later one hundred euro or whatever number. Um, think about it. Think like a businessman. Do you think? that with an investment of two minutes, you can automatically earn, let's say, 100 euro, question mark. So uh, be careful. I do it here just for, for illustrating purposes, but uh, let me have in mind, I don't come to a trading conclusion uh, within those two minutes. and. Uh, looking more and more about this chart, I change my mind. I go for a long trade. Um, so now let's think we have we would go market here. And 
for simplicity reason, I first, and I will later show you another way how to come to a stop loss level, I say, okay, my stop loss level might be here. And what I do now is I write down those two numbers, 112.421, would, let's say I go market uh, uh, into the trade, and I have 111.978 being the stop loss value here. So what I need else uh, in a second uh, is the exchange rate between Euro and Japanese Yen, and I will show you why. Um, but now I want to calculate my lot size. And for that purpose, I have created a simple Excel sheet here, and um, that Excel sheet works the following. What we need first is that we need the contract size. For Forex, it's always easy. It's a 100,000. Um, I wrote down already other numbers here for other underlyings like DAX, S&P 500, gold, and oil. Then you have um, other numbers being the contract size. Forex is a 100,000. That's all. So the next thing, we want to trade US dollar. I write it down here. US dollar, Japanese yen. And... Um, my 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 speaking uh, about uh, forex pairs is always like uh, there's a first name and a last name. So first name US dollar, last name Japanese yen. If we trade this one here, what we need is Euro XXX. That means we need the exchange rate Euro Japanese yen. And that was a reason to get that number of 132. And now my entry was 112 point four to one and the other one is the stop loss value is one hundred eleven nine seven eight and now I have to say how much money I want to risk with the trade and let's think um, that I want to to risk here twenty euros um, then I can trade point oh six lots now it's a little bit funny that uh, because uh, that number here must be something like 5999 or uh, something like that uh, because um, my cut number here is uh, one digit less so uh, in reality i would uh, let me just uh, cross check this one here uh, if i go a little bit higher then yeah we come to the 0.06 uh, lots but anyhow so what I now have, I know exactly that I can trade 0.05 lot and my risk will be a little bit less than 20 euros. And I can have a stop loss value as being set and at that entry level. And I do this always. No trade without that kind of calculation. I want to make sure that with my given stop loss value out of the chart, in this case, let me go, uh, switch back here to that green line here, that I do not risk more than 20 euros for that next trade. Therefore, from that stop loss value, I calculate the lot size, and now I'm on the safe side. And don't do it, or that's at least my recommendation, to say, oh, yeah, my next trade will be 0.1 lot. I know that uh, I have done this always. Um, you can do that if you would have a fixed distance for your stop loss value. Then you might do that kind of calculation once, and then you can... Um, enter your trades that way but it's not my favorite because i want to adjust my stop loss either to the chart itself like looking for resistance lines or something like that or and that is the next topic some other um, helpful tools to come to uh, to a stop loss value but let's see so the risk calculation is essential not doing this, I think, is one of the biggest mistakes um, people can do with uh, in their trading activities. So no placement of any trade without um, a stop loss and a given risk in euro. 
so or uh, whatever current uh, account currency you have um, but it's important to do it not doing and i saw so many examples <clears throat> just entering trades not knowing the risk of that specific trades it's a disaster um, we have other possibilities to create the stop loss value like just out of the chart but that is now is um, one of the next topics and that is the stop loss setting in general so we know already um, that uh, a stop loss <clears throat> is quite important for any trade uh, so stop loss is a must and it comes directly to the next mistake mm, a lot of people are doing quite often stop loss values are extremely tight meaning going back to my chart and my my picture here that people just um, look here and say okay no stop loss for that trade uh, might be here a little bit below for example <clears throat> to the previous candle so an extremely tight stop loss then seeing okay that looks great long going long here and target maybe here and finally what you have here is a risk reward ratio uh, visually it might be above 10 so it looks great and that will be the next topic on the next slide but before we come to that so one thing a lot of people are doing is that they use extremely tight stop loss values in order to create at a better risk reward ratio um, but that's not good you will see in a minute the logic people are following here is often a little bit like i did it um, in my one minute derivation of my trade we look first maybe on a daily chart then for several hours and we have, might even have a clear picture of what time frame for that trade is, is appropriate so what i have always in mind is to look how long should that trade run and in this case i say okay several hours that's my 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 target for the trade duration but then finally people are looking for the stop loss value out of the chart maybe even in an m1 chart and that is not good simple reason we know that our markets they have what i call a natural noise and that noise has to be taken into account um, so so prices are always a little bit wiggling around and going back here to my chart uh, it would mean okay if i now would have entered my my long trade just a little bit moving around that stop loss would be hit and it's simply gambling to say if that stop loss value is not hit i can reach that target but that is not trading that is gambling and uh, therefore i simply won't do uh, go for something like that the good thing is we can help ourselves to possibilities one is um, and that is something we have looked already in previous webinars to to that kind of curves um, or that kind of analysis what i have calculated for the last 14 years is the average move of an underlying in whatever direction long or short after a specific time so how to read that chart let's simply go here for australian dollar japanese yen what can we see here so after 50 hours which is about two days typically in average and that means in average the price would be 1.5 percent away from my starting point 1.5 percent and 
what you see here is you see that more or less square root behavior, which is really close to square root what we see here. Um, by the way, this is a hint for random walk behavior of our markets. Um, and finally, uh, you know my my comments on that. What we need are what we need is uh, the deviation from the random behavior in order to enter profitable trades. But anyhow, so we know if we have 50 hours as a target for our trade for the trade duration, we can expect movements of 1.5 percent. Would it make sense to have a stop loss value? around 0.2% for that trade? Answer, no, definitely not. Because typically we would be kicked out of our trade already in the first two hours. Because we can follow that line here down and then we have an indication, hey, that does not work. So you might, in order to have good stop loss values for your trades, um, of course, you, you have a trading idea behind maybe a trading logic or whatever uh, that will help you to set your stop loss value as well. But if you doesn't do, uh, if you don't know exactly how to set it, those lines might help you. And what you see here is Australian dollar, Japanese yen is moving more far away within a certain time than currency pairs like, for example, Euro Swiss franc or Euro British pound, which uh, are at the lower end of um, those curves here. So that is one thing. So you look for an expected trade duration. And for example, if you go for a trade which should run for one week, which is about 100 20 hours, you can expect Australian dollar, Japanese yen, a movement of 2.3%. But once again, then you can't set your stop loss value like here. That's not a good idea. So that's one thing what you can do. The other thing you can do here to get a good stop loss values or to at least to have a hint of where to set the stop loss value is you simply use an ATR in your chart and what i always do is i use a fixed minimum of zero because that would gives me more meaningful charts here and normally i use periods which are um, a little bit higher than the standard values for example for h1 i my minimum would always be 24 so i have always one day history for for building up the number and even for an M15 chart, uh, still in this case, I would use the one day. So then it would be a period of uh, 96. So let's have a look here. And what I see, okay, my ATR value right now, uh, and uh, you see immediately why I use that, that zero um, as a lower limit for the chart, uh, because otherwise it, it looks always crazy. Um, if you have it uh, zoomed up here. So we, we see we have about 0.1 being the ATR value. 0.1, uh, that would be from, from the green line and we have here, it would be something like about here. So that's one ATR distance. And a good first estimate is always to have something like a factor of two or a factor of three ATR values. Um, in order to have a good stop loss value. Another possibility to, to have it more graphically directly here is to use um, a Bollinger Band and uh, not just to create that trade. No, it would be in order to get a stop loss value. Um, I use the same period 96 uh, deviation um, uh, is something like here. And then you see what would be the distance for a stop loss here? So right now, okay, you see my my uh, we are already out of the Bollinger Band, but I use visually that distance between the middle line and uh, the lower limit here. That kind of distance would be a good hint for a stop loss. That means it would be something around here. And then you have already two good hints for getting a stop loss value for your trade. 
either ATR or Bollinger Band. Both have simply the reason to avoid to be kicked out just by market noise. And that's what we want uh, to achieve here. So stop loss setting is quite critical and um, we need it. And we have two easy tools. And even if you look to, to that chart here, um, um, the, the typical move within a certain time, those help you to get your stop loss setting right. But as I mentioned, risk reward ratio for your trade trading is another good thing. And I name it a little bit different here. Just the tail of risk reward ratio or the tail of good risk reward ratios. The internet and, and the websites, uh, you find um, hundreds of statements like, hey, here we have a trade with a fantastic risk reward ratio of 10 or a fantastic risk reward ratio of five, something like that. So people are telling you that the risk reward ratio of the trade is high and because the risk reward ratio is high, it's a good trade, but that's nonsense. That's bullshit. So the thinking behind is the higher the risk reward ratio, the better, but that's bullshit. There's no logic behind that statement. A little bit more correct would it would be the higher the risk reward ratio, the smaller is the necessary hit rate in order to be profitable. That is correct. You know, if you have a risk reward ratio of one, then neglecting the, the, uh, the cost of trading, you need a hit rate of 50% in order to, to be at break even. And um, risk reward ratio of two to one means you need a 33.3% uh, hit rate and so on and so forth. But still, that does not mean that the higher the risk reward ratio, the better. Nonsense. If you would think like that, you should play lottery. So in Germany, you can buy a, a typical uh, Sunday, no, uh, a Saturday ticket. I think it costs around 10 euros. I'm not familiar with that, but let me take just those numbers. It costs you 10 euros and it's uh, the name is six out of um, 49 plus one or something like that. And in principle, if everything goes with you, uh, then you can earn a million or even more. So invest 10 euros, potential gain, potential profit, 1 million, that would be a risk reward ratio of 1 to 100,000. Crazy. Is that good? Nonsense. It's only a high risk reward ratio. And the probability to be on the winning side is quite low. As remember that number, I think it's 1 to 149 million. Uh, that's a probability to, to um, get the jackpot of uh, that lottery. So high risk reward ratios have nothing to do with good trading directly. We, something or the, the mistake behind is always that uh, thinking in risk reward ratios is like I could adjust, or I can adjust my potential profit. In principle, that is correct because that, that gives my target value for the take profit. But we still know we have hit weights and the higher the risk reward ratio, typically with all trading activities, the hit rate will be uh, come quite low. So that's one thing. The other is that, and that might be new for you as well, the higher the risk reward ratios in your normal trading activities are, then the typical drawdown of your trading is even higher. Let's look to that a little bit more practically. And uh, that we do uh, with an Excel sheet here as well. And honestly, 
even that Excel sheet is one Excel sheet we used already in a previous webinar. So let me guide you quickly through uh, that uh, Excel sheet. It, it works with random traits, so with random numbers. And in this Excel sheet, we can really adjust everything. That means we can uh, enter a number for our hit rate of trading. And in my case here, the, uh, I have a hit rate of 50% and my average gain is one and my average loss is minus one and my risk per trade is 10 euros. So it means I always, uh, either I, I gain 10 euros or I lose 10 euros. And uh, you know, automatically the expectation value per trade is simply zero. And in this case, we do 1,000 1, trades and my expected value for my trading account after 1,000 trades is simply still 1,000 euro because um, all the numbers are adjusted like that. But now the but or uh, the astonishing result. Let's look to the maximum drawdown during that trading sequence here, 1,000 trades, the maximum drawdown is in this case 310 euros. Okay, let me just resample everything. So um, it's now a different trading sequence, still the same statistics behind, but we get a number of maximum drawdown of 570 uh, euro and so on and so forth. You see, whenever I press F9, we get new numbers here. Uh, sometimes our account is slightly positive after 1,000 trades, sometimes slightly negative, or this one is uh, not that bad. And you see our typical maximum drawdown is 200, 300 euros, sometimes a little bit higher. Okay, so even that can happen. And now I come to an, uh, to an extreme value directly. Let's assume we have um, a hit rate only of 10%. And uh, we have, um, but on the other hand, uh, we, we have a risk reward ratio of nine to one. So still just uh, following simple math here um, that calculates to our expected uh, value is still zero. So for that hit rate of 10% with a risk reward ratio of nine to one, we can expect one, no gain, no loss, but you see already in the first sequence here, our maximum drawdown is already 1,000 euro. Let me press F9 once again, 840, 720, 900, 1,000. Oh, in this case, the uh, account would be ruined. But anyhow, you see what happens? The higher the risk reward ratio you trade, the higher the expected drawdown will be. And now it com comes to the psychological aspect of trading. Drawdowns are nothing you want to have in your account. And those phases, time periods, um, yeah, might um, make you crazy during trading. And now you see what happens with those high risk reward ratio. Pure statistical argumentation lead to high maximum drawdowns automatically. And the story is still valid even if I make that account profitable already here mathematically, like um, I, I add a little bit uh, hit rate here. So you now see um, my, my expectation per trade is now uh, one euro and I should have 1,000 euro gain um, so uh, after 1,000 trades, but still we get high numbers of maximum drawdown. So um, you see what happens. So message, trading with high risk reward ratios is not instantly something which is good. And even worse, trading with high risk reward ratios and normal hit rates according to those risk reward ratios and you will suffer higher maximum drawdowns. So that is something we have to keep in mind because it's not something um, you might have on your agenda uh, always. Okay, so that's about risk reward ratios. The solution is simply, there is no good or bad risk, re risk reward ratio. No, there's only, um, you need 
your your statistics on your trading account and uh, then you know uh, um, what's going on. Okay, just one remark on that. If you want to have a trend following approach, then uh, typically, yes, you need risk reward ratios in the range of um, um, about a three or something like that, or you need higher risk reward ratios. Reason? Trends, and that is for a trend following approach, uh, trends are more exceptional than usual uh, in all of our underlyings. So relation is about 30 to 70. So already that is telling you, you need higher risk reward ratios because you, you will not survive. Um, you need those sequences of losses to get uh, from time to time uh, those extraordinary um, profits. So that is more out of all my activities, um, trading of tr building up trading systems, uh, then you learn automatically you need higher risk reward ratios in order to survive. Anyhow, so it's really a tale of the good risk reward ratio. And I hope that uh, you have learned that the higher your risk reward ratio, then normally the higher is your maximum drawdown. Next thing I want to mention here is never to forget the costs. And especially if you trade on higher time frames, like daily um, time frames, then we have to consider the swap costs. We talk about at the beginning of this webinar already about costs, but now we look for the swap costs, the financing costs you have within your trading activities. So normally if you do just intraday trading, okay, uh, then that is not a topic for you um, because you will never have swap costs or swap gains in your account. But a lot of people are doing trades uh, maybe a couple of days or a couple of even of weeks, even months. And then that is a quite important uh, topic uh, looking to, to the swap costs. Generally speaking, um, long trades on indices, they generate always swap costs. And um, if we would have uh, once again, higher interest rates, then you we will finally re reach the state that if you enter a short trade of, uh, on an index, then you will even gain uh, swap costs. So you will earn money by entering the trade. But um, right now, we are not at that level. For Forex trading, the story is a little bit more complicated because then um, it involves the different regions we trade against each other, like Euro, US dollar. It means it's a European area against the US area. Uh, Australian dollar, Japanese yen, so once again, two different regions. And it depends on the, the relationship of the interest rates in those regions, and they have an F, um, impact on the final interest um, rate or the swap costs of your trade short and long. So why are those swap costs that important? Let's have a look to an account of mine here. And um, that is, I have one account which is really trading uh, long term. Um, and uh, so it enters uh, the trades on a daily basis, and um, maximum duration of a trade here is 120 days. Um, and that's uh, uh, calendar days, so four months. Um, so it's a quite long time. And what I want to, to share with you here is um, just a list of trades. Uh, so we go to the history of that account. And uh, by the way, the account is really uh, um, maybe if that one first, you see, it does not look that bad. So it started in April. Um, so um, balance is right now 122,000 uh, euros. Equity is even um, nearly uh, 150,000 euro for um, and that for four months or five months is uh, really not that bad. And now we go to the list of trades of the history. And 
let me simply um, adjust the list here in the order of swap costs. And uh, now, oh, and there's vice versa, just a second. So now, here we go. And now we look to the list of trades um, being done here. And you see, I have trades, okay, they have a trade duration of uh, five months, three to uh, three to five months. And you see what number we have, swap costs of 100 euros. Okay, the profit here was nearly 300, that's good. Um, in this case, so finally that adds still up to a profitable trade. But just look to the numbers you can have here. It was a long trade, Euro, Australian dollar, and that is a number you have to, 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 uh, to gain first in order to be profitable. So it's normal that you have those swap costs. It's nothing you can blame the broker for because the broker is only um, transferring um, the, the costs. Uh, the, the broker itself um, has to pay that cost to, to the liquidity provider where finally your trade uh, um, really uh, is uh, in your trading activities. But so it's real costs and they have to be covered and you see that there are trades here um, minus trades 200 euros and additionally on top of that we have 70 euros um, trading costs via swaps and okay the trade duration was uh, about four months um, and you see the lot size is 0.11 so it's not that huge there are big numbers uh, for swap costs, and those have to be taken into account if um, you you enter trades on a more long term. And message here is quite simple: just look to the web page. Um, for example, here the, the JFD broker uh, web page uh, with uh, all the swap costs and. Um, where we are here. And then you can have always a quick look of what's generating money and what really generating costs. Um, and then you can have that in mind. And maybe the idea is quite simple. Avoid trades with high swap costs. The good news is the Forex universe is so huge that you will find always other and finally better trading possibilities, trading chances, um, and then simply avoid those with high negative swaps. And um, then you are on the more safe side and you don't have costs like in my account. In that account, it's okay because those, the trading strategy behind has already already been built with those swap costs. And so that kind of strategy, let's call it, the strategy knows what it is doing. But just looking for a long-term trade out of the chart, then I would say I avoid those Forex pairs which have high negative swaps. And I will find other possibilities in that Forex universe. So it's not a real limitation uh, for your trading activity. So that's about swap costs. Finally, one topic here. Um, and this is a question I uh, get a lot of questions. Uh, yeah, questions about that as well, uh, via email or coaching or whatever. And that is the expect, uh, expectation values all around trading activities. So what profits can I expect with my personal trade? That's a fantastic um, question. Um, and by the way, my first answer when, when I get that question is always, how much money are you willing to lose? And uh, then people are a little bit surprised because of that question, because they talk about uh, profits and I t uh, talk first thing about what are you willing or accepting maybe to lose. Uh, it's quite funny, but anyhow. So 
reason for the question is that people think trading gives um, quick and fast uh, wealth. Yeah, but that's not right. So first thing which is wrong on that um, discussion is already thinking in percent rate of returns. So we, we love those percent values like, hey, my account uh, has increased uh, by uh, 23% within the last uh, three months, or I have doubled my account in one uh, month. Numbers like that you find in the web, uh, uh, the internet uh, all around. But let's come to the basics. Um, just an example here. Trader A has a gain of plus 20% within one year, and he has suffered a drawdown during that year of 50%. And we have a trader B uh, with a gain of plus 10%, and that one, the maximum drawdown within that year has been 5%. So which one is now the better trader? Or what is a better account? What is the one you may like to follow or whatever you want to do with that information. Of course, it's Trader B. Um, I think it's quite obvious. Of course, Trader A has more profit, 20%, instead of plus 10 with Trader B, but with a drawdown of 50% instead of just 5 for Trader B. So thinking purely in percent rate of return or interest rates like something like that or just another number for that um, return on invest is not a suitable key figure when it comes to trading definitely answer no if you like those percentage numbers then you have to rethink like then you go for the percent return on invest and you divide that one by your percent maximum drawdown. And if that number is bigger than one, great, you are good. You are on the profitable side, definitely. And if you already have a ratio there of bigger than two, then you are already extremely good with your trading activities. So really thinking in terms of what gain in percent as return on invest I can achieve with trading is totally wrong because then we have always to ask what has been the maximum drawdown as well. Nevertheless, because everybody likes those numbers, let's do a quick estimate here. And now we come back to those percent values. And that quick estimate should... Um, yeah, um, keep our expectations level not too high. Let's have a look here. Expectation. So think we might be um, of the opinion that we can gain 10% per month. It sounds not that huge, but you will see it is huge. Following that 10% per month, and I have already added up here all those values in years, would bring an account of 10,000 euro after 10 years to nearly 1,000 million. And now million is in the German language style. Uh, so you see the number here uh, written. So um, it's 100 million. And not 100, 1,000 million in 10 years. Can you think that this is something you can achieve? Definite answer, no. Um, you would even have to, to wait a couple of years later um, or uh, to wait a couple of years more, or you may start already with 100,000. Um, then your balance sheet is longer than the one of the EZB. Or uh, if I compare those numbers with um, the budget of uh, the German government, I only need, um, no, I think, three or four more years than I have the budget of the German government. Is that reasonable? Answer, no. 
Nevertheless, there might be months you can get those 10% in a row. But on a long run, like 10 years, no. And even not thinking about that, what I call the luxury uh, problem, uh, how to get my, my orders into the market uh, if I would... Um, order maybe 10,000 lots of Euro, US dollar long or something like that. That's not the question here. It's simply the question, can we achieve those numbers? And the answer is no. In terms of those numbers, what might be reasonable is in the range of 1% to 2% per month, adding up to about 10 to 20% a year. That is something I think is realistic. To have a different look to that number as well. Uh, we can do something which I would not recommend to do all, uh, every day. We can compare ourselves or our expectations with the real best ones in the world. Because there's every year a so-called World Trading Championship. And what you see there is something like you, you would run... Um, against Houston Bolt for 100 meter race. And um, that is what we are doing now. So let's nevertheless have a look to that World Trading Championship and uh, the current standings uh, right there. And uh, they are here. And what we have now, nine months are more or less over. Um, there are um, two um championships one is for future trading one is for forex trading uh, let's first focus here on the forex trading which is more common to to what we are doing here and you see the best five the best one is at 100 and already the fifth here is at 21. you can imagine how that row would go further down here uh, if you would see the results of uh, who is ranked at uh, 10, 20, and 100. So let's look to the one at uh, the fifth rank here. Um, 21% after nine months. And those are the best you can see. So if you compare ourselves with that 1% to 2% per month, which would add above, uh, roughly to, to those 20, 24, 26% a year, hey, that's already impressive. That's a good result. Why do you find even higher numbers on a lot of other uh, contests? Simply because people are gambling. Yeah, they, they just risk for a single trade, more or less, they do all in. And then maybe they are lucky enough and then they have a gain of 2,000% or something like that. But that's not trading, that's gambling. And that's definitely not what I would recommend. So here, looking to the best you can find, you see that going for an expectation value like um, I can double my account within one year um, and I will do it um, several years in a row um, is nothing you can uh, achieve. So nevertheless, it gives us a good comparison to what we personally can expect. And... Um, my recommendation here, keep your targets low. That's all. Wow, it's already more than one hour uh, here. So in a nutshell, I think, um, you know, stop loss are important. The given risk is even more important. For your stop loss setting, you might uh, use tools like ATR or Bollinger Bands um, in order to, to get rid of uh, to the, the overall market noise. And uh, you have learned that even over trading, entering too many trades per day, having a too high trading volume per day is a risk uh, additionally. And uh, yeah, that high risk reward ratios are not automatically good trades. It's, uh, it's simply a tale about that. And even worse, high risk reward ratios generate from statistical point of uh, view, 
already hired rodents. And finally, have always the cost of trades um, to be taken into account and uh, keep your expectation levels low. I think then you are in a good way. Uh, avoid gambling in any sense of trading and uh, that will help to improve your personal trading activities, hopefully. Okay, that's for me right now. And next uh, webinar in two weeks will be once again um, more related directly to trading strategies. But those kind of aspects as um, today uh, is really important as well because we we love to, 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 to interpret the chart entering the next trade and uh, at least we have a set of rules we um, we we have to listen we have to follow and uh, if we do so it will help um, to be better with our trading that's for now i hope you enjoy the webinar once again see you uh, or my colleagues will see you in one of those uh, next webinars um, have a nice evening bye bye